What's up, people? Uh, today, we're going to do a lesson on how to use your DSP software. And this is not a lesson on how to tune, although there will be some tidbits in there that will help uh, to explain how that works. But this is, this is uh, essentially to help those people who look at this and go, holy crap, that's a lot of stuff. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And I'm lost. This is a roadmap to help get you unlost. So, first of all, let's talk about the basic components. This is a piece of software, by the way, from uh, a Wave uh, DSP, which is a decent DSP, but that's not that's not important. So, we're just going to use this as the basic because it is very similar across the board to other pieces of software. They're all very similar. They all look pretty much like this. When you understand how this one works, you'll be able to transfer that knowledge to any other piece of software you're using. So let's get started. Up here in the top left-hand corner, this is our source area, okay? So first of all, just covering this in chunks because it's not that bad once you break it down. This is this, this this uh blah 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 blah. This DSP has multiple ways to get information into it. The main is what you're probably going to be using. This is the line ins, you know. This is your your coaxials plugging in. Okay. You've also got an aux, an extra input that you can use. You got a Bluetooth input, so you can Bluetooth from your phone or your tablet or your computer or whatever straight into this device and send uh, information send music straight to this DSP without using any wires. Uh, and of course you got coax, you got multiple different sources. So that's what you're doing is you're selecting a source. And down here, this is also input. All this is input, right? So you're going to be using two channels of input, four channels, six channels, or some odd mix, like a five channel, for example. So if you're doing two channels in, meaning you've got a left and right RCA and that's it, okay? You're going to send that to the DSP and let the DSP dictate all the other channels, then you'd select this one. And you'll notice up here on this inputs all the way across the top, this is where this is going to change. So if we select four channel, it's going to go front left, front right, and uh, on the input, and okay, it's still on two. Why not change? Let's see. It should have changed. All right, yeah, it did. There we go. Let's see. That should stay the same. That changed. So there's your sub showing up, sub left and sub right. And then four channel changes it to four individual channels. So on your input, you see you got front left, front right. And if you got on a two channel, you got front left, front right. And on your output, this is where you're changing how you're playing out. So you got th four different channels here. On this, we're just concerned about this area right now. So you got your front left playing out full on channel one. Your front right, which is this, playing out full on channel two. So that would be your front doors. And let's say you had some, or let's say you had some A pillars. So you can change these to different channels. So Whatever you have this set is what it's going to output. You can make this channel output anything, or you can turn it off completely by hitting null. You can make it a center channel. And once you choose to make it a center channel, you can choose to make it full, tweeter, or a woofer. There's lots of different options here. And that goes for each one of these. But for a basic setup, let's say you've got a... Uh, Say you're going to run this as a uh, four channels up, up front, right? So you got your two tweeters and your two mid ranges that you're going to run. So you would you'd have front left and front right, and then you would ch change this this output. So this is number one. You would change it to say front mid range, okay? And then one and two will be front front mid or front mid range, front right mid range, and front left mid range, and that adjusted things down here but we're not, we're not talking about that yet uh, so when we got that connected right 
Then you go over here, well, we want uh, three and four to be our tweeters. So you just select that, the front, tweeter. You notice how it changed down here also. So now it made this, this is a, a, a component set now in the front. All right, back here, we're not gonna be using channels five and six, okay? So we're gonna set those to null. And we're going to be using uh, channels 7 and 8 for subwoofers. So we'll just go that and we'll turn those into woofers. And this links right here, by the way. So it copies from left to right. If you hit this, when you've got more tuning going on and you want these two to, to play in the same, the same game, you would copy. You could copy from left to right and you could, you could uh, make them the same. But that's if you're wondering what that little button was for. And the test allows you to play test tones. But we're not hooked up, so this is an offline mode here. So now we've got it set up for mids and tweeters and woofers. All right. And then when you get when you get this set up to where you want it in your outputs, because the outputs are what's important. Channels one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, and to get this set up, this is your, your crossovers and your, your assignment. So if we go back to the mid-range, you'll see that it's applied a crossover uh, frequency down here to that to those drivers by default. Also with the tweeters, if we select that tweeter, you see that it's applied a crossover. And you can change this. This is a basic crossover, and that's actually not terrible. It's, a, it's, it's pretty high, but it's not terrible. And that's your mid crossover frequency. So you get this set up, and then you've got the start, right? <clears throat> now you notice there's a when I when I'm selecting these, these crossover settings are changing, right there in that little box right here. Okay. So if we go to channel one, you see the crossover here. You can see the settings are moved, and that's the crossover settings. So the mid range, it set that. You see how it changes. So you set that for where you want your mid-range to start. And this one for where you want it to end. So this gives you your, your uh, high-pass filter and your low-pass filter. It allows everything below that and everything above this. And you can adjust this with numbers. You can type these in. So you can set that at 500. And it will, it should, yeah, there it goes. It should automatically snap to that. You can set that for, say, 10,000. You see how that, oh, I actually set it for 1,000. I didn't have enough zeros in there. Let's try that again. And there we go. So this is how you set your frequency for this channel. You notice that we have this one highlighted. And so we're working on that specific channel. And this over here is your slope. This is how fast it drops. So if we adjust this, let me get off of that. And isn't that moving? There we go. So you see how it drops and stretches out more? That depend that dictates your slope. How quickly you want that filter to come into play. And same thing with this one. There we go. Much quicker, much longer. And that would be, you can also type that in up here. So, and in some, some softwares, you're not going to have the, uh, the slider. You're just going to have a type in. So, and 24 dBs is excellent. And, of course, over here, you select the filter model. And uh, link widths, Butterworth, you notice how it changes slightly. Bezel. And I typically go with, uh, for tuning purposes, I typically go with 24, uh, 24 dB slope for most everything uh, by default on a Butterworth crossover. I find that that <coughs> ends up being uh, the most easy to work with. So you're doing this channel. We're still on channel one. And uh, we've created this mid-range frequency here. Uh, and then you can go to channel two. Channel two is hasn't been affected yet. Now you say, okay, I like this mid-range frequency, so I can just go, hey, let's just copy 
from there and then we can undo that and it'll automatically propagate that see so now we, we once you get one and set up you can propagate it to two and you can always leave those linked you can leave them connected and then anything that you do to one channel will automatically be happening to the other channel but you can use that if you if you've got something you've done to one channel that you like and you want to copy it to the other you can easily do that with this feature here connect them and then, then disconnect them again and now they're separate but they carry the same information and of course you can repeat this for the other channels as well so this is how you get the setup and of course whenever you if, if you don't know exactly what you're doing you can just say i wanted a front mid-range and it's going to apply uh and you just say copy it's going to apply that uh that a decent uh curve so if you're if you're confused if you're if you're new uh you can just follow this right here and not have to worry about setting it up yourself you can just set it to say a front mid-range or front you know whatever and it's going to do that for you it's going to apply those curves and you can go to your tweeters you can say yeah i want front tweeters and it's going to apply that that crossover for you so once you get past this part and you've got your your crossover set up we will proceed on onward and you remember though these controls this is going to be where you're where you're adjusting things and that across the board so let's say we're going back to our mid-range again we like this this is what we're rolling with right down here we have an eq you notice how it isn't affecting anything right now it's because there's nothing no information that's down that low our crossover points way up here so now we're actually causing a causing a change all right and this is your this is your eq for this speaker for, for this channel so <clears throat> there's a few things we can do with this for one we can also we can equalize each individual channel which is one of the beautiful things about a dsp but uh there's a few things we can do inside that as well one of those is the curve so let's let's make a, a modification on the frequency right and uh you can see that we've got this peak right here if we go down here and change this to say a 1.66 that sounds good all right now you notice how wide that change is now on that channel the, the the adjustment that we're making is much more significant it's much broader um, so whenever you change this number let's change it to an 8.00 maybe that'll work and that should be a oh it didn't wait a minute here we go there you go that's a pretty narrow change pretty narrow band this is the uh, uh, the q factor so it's that's how wide the change you're making when you see the term paramet bar, uh, parametric parametric equalizer that's what this is all about this allows you to change what band you're equalizing and to change how wide of a chunk you're moving up and down um i don't know how big we can go with this See, it shrunk down quite a bit there. Made a nice small, and you can also usually are on some some equalizers. Some of these softwares, you can move it like this, right? So in this case, not only can I move it up so up and down, but I can also change the frequency with which that's working on. And you notice right in here in this window how it changes uh, that number. So you can you can tell any one of these sliders to be any frequency and affect as much or as little as you want it's very very flexible um so in this case in the case where we're in, in this particular scenario where we're doing a mid-range driver you notice that this down here didn't affect anything because there's nothing there's no information that's 40 hertz but let's say you really wanted to tweak you know the crap out of this this frequency you could uh bring this channel over here you know and 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 add it to the, the tweaking process 
I wouldn't recommend doing it exactly the way I did it, but you can. So you could, in theory, um, you know, and like I said, I'm showing you some horrible practices, but uh, you could, in theory, do this. You could, you could have each one, you know, you could tweak these things, and you could really, you know, manipulate whatever you want to change. These are things you can't do with a standalone, like, equalizer and whatnot. You just don't have the flexibility to do this stuff. And if you've made a big mess like this, just go down here and hit reset, and it'll fix the problems for you. Get back to the default. <laughs> but the flexibility of having this many bands of equalization is huge uh, whenever you're trying to tune a vehicle. So, you, like I said, you're only using this much frequency, but you've got 31 bands of, of stuff that you can put in there and, and work with. And then you can reassign the frequencies just by typing them in here. You can type in which frequency you want, and it will it will assign it. Or you can do it like I did it and just, just start dragging them around and piling them up. Uh, good times all around, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, on to this section. This is the gain section. This is essentially the individual volume controls for each uh, channel of your output. And this, cha this particular DSP has... Eight channels of output so you've got eight potential volumes and once you set you know if you wanted your tweeters which are set at channel one or mid-range but set at one and two you want them to be pretty loud but you want your your three and four tweeters to be less loud you could come in here and reduce the output on them you could also reduce it differentially so you could have the output on the on channel four be a little bit hotter than channel three you know, and you can come out, oh, yeah, my subwoofer is way too hot, so I'm going to turn it down some here. And you could also individually set those. And once you do this, this is, is independent from your stereo system or from anything else. This, this volume differential will, will maintain the same all the time. So once you've got this set up, you can control uh, your stereo's volume, and it will, all of this will stay the same relative to each other. Now this also is a is your main gain, and um, normally, you know, uh, it's wherever it needs to be. Really, uh, setting this to be hotter can help you fight noise. If you've got a if you've got any kind of engine noise or any kind of noises that you're trying to get rid of, sometimes having this output here, this main output, a little hotter will help uh, solve noise floor issues and whatnot. And of course, if you're using a subwoofer in here, you have a sub control as well, a separate sub control. So if you've got something to assign to subwoofer, which in this case you do, it's going to automatically increase that up and down. And a lot of times the controls, and this thing has one too. This uh, this is the unit that we're that we're uh, looking at, and uh, it has this functionality right here, right? So this thing right here is is what we're messing with. So that sub that controller allows you to control this and the sub independently. So you've got a bass knob and a volume knob built into that thing, and that uh, that's what this essentially is for. So yeah, you can still set those. This is allowing you to front to change them up front, you know, up and down. Uh, so that's what that's for. Of course, you can set them here without the controller, and yeah. Anyway. Now, we're over here in the delay box. Oh, yeah, you can mute stuff there, too, by the way. You can mute a channel uh, temporarily or permanently. Okay. But over in the delay box, this is kind of complicated, but this is allowing you to set delay for each individual channel. So let's just focus on two channels. We're going to assume we only have two channels. Uh, let's say that your driver's side is on channel one. And... Uh, Let's see we have it set you set it in inches millimeters we're going to do inches let's say that your driver's side uh channel one speaker is uh 14 inches away from from you and your passenger side uh speaker that same speaker is 62 inches away or 60 whatever that was inches away from you 64 inches away from you this is how you would set this, okay? And what's going to happen is it's going to delay channel one, the sound coming out of channel one, 
uh, and long enough for channel 2 sound to catch up to that 14 inches so that when they both hit your ears they'll be in sync with each other that's essentially what's happening you can set this up as a distance you can set it up in milliseconds however you want to do it I usually recommend that people start out using inches or centimeters whichever one is easiest for you to understand uh, and use that for that purpose and phase is flipping so you flip in phase and uh, you can set it in different degrees of phase and I really not even going to get into that because you, you can this is this is really tweaking okay this is the beginner course and uh, we're not trying to get too deep into that but uh, that allows you to manipulate uh, phase alignment from uh, two different frequencies so if t two, fre the same frequency from two different sources will get to your head they'll be slightly out of phase you can tweak that phase with that and uh, yeah like I said once you get to where you want that functionality then you'll understand what that functionality is for now that's uh, next level stuff so we're going to skip out of that so you understand the gains how to set that up and if you don't understand this just leave them alone until you need them and then you'll understand them uh, delay is easy just measure the distance from your head to the speaker and then assign it a distance and you'll be good with that if you don't understand that don't mess with it yet the main thing you need to worry about in the beginning is uh, making sure you get your crossover points right and if you use the defaults in this one it's going to give you something that will probably not kill your speakers so start out with the basics and then as you need the more advanced functionality then you learn more about those functionalities don't try to dive into this all at one time because it can get crazy there's a lot of stuff in here uh, there's there's multiple inputs like we've been doing this all on two channels you know if we run it on six channels there's six channels of input so if you go to your front left all right there's your front left we call it a front left what does that do you know what does that do what does this what does this one do <laughs> so we can set that up to uh your rear left we can set this one to rear right so now you've got a front left front right rear left rear right right these are all inputs and then do you want that to play the tweeter no we don't want that to play the tweeter we want that to play something else so we want to play the rear woofer you know whatever so once you set up your inputs on six and we're doing multiple channels you set up your inputs then you can set up your outputs for each one but most of the time what you're going to be looking at is two channels inputs that's what this is is inputs two channels of inputs which just means you got a front left and a front right and you're going to use th that to cover everything uh down here on the subwoofer same thing front left or front right you can pick one you can make one null you could just use the front right for the subwoofer and bam or you could add a subwoofer input so it's just a matter of how many inputs you're going to have and then what those inputs are going to output to and then in order to like i said in order to uh in order to change uh the uh blah 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 man i'm gonna tell you yeah this is a morning for me also just understand it's morning time i was going to do this last night well my buddy called and he wanted to talk about truck driving so yeah it kind of interrupted me and, and now i'm doing it in the morning but hopefully uh, I made enough sense in here and I just stumbled through this I downloaded the software uh, and turned it on and I started recording like a minute later so uh, I haven't had a chance to go through here myself I'm kind of having to pick my way through oh you can change the color of your little bars you know so that's kind of cool I don't know what the point of that is but um, but yeah that's the basics I do like the fact that they've got it in blocks and it kind of makes it easier to separate um, gain section the delay section you know the crossover section but the thing is it, it's it, this this is a tool it's like think of it like a box of tools when you go to your toolbox 
and you open it up, you're only after one tool. You're wanting a wrench. You're wanting a screwdriver. Right? You're not picking up every tool in the toolbox and taking it to take out a screw. You're just getting the screwdriver. So when you look at this, think of it as a, as a toolbox full of tools. You don't need all these tools. You only need the screwdriver. Right? You need the wrench. You need the socket set. You know, a 10 millimeter socket. Whatever, right? You need that. That's what you needed. You didn't need any of this other stuff. You just needed that. So don't don't let it overwhelm you. And uh, you know, get uh, if you want to if you want to uh, learn about it. Here's another key, like you know what I'm doing right now. Download, uh, go to whatever uh, DSP you're going to use, and download the software on your computer, and play with it. Play with it before you even buy it. Because this gives you the opportunity to learn uh, the basic functionality and find all these little tricks. And then whenever you start messing with the actual device, you'll have a good leg up on how to get things done. That's probably the best advice I could give anybody. Download the software and play with it. You know, I've given you enough information now that you should be able to rock on with it and, uh, and make things happen. But anyway, hopefully I was helpful. If I uh, was, be sure and hit the subscribe button and the like button and the comments. Comments are good. I'll try to answer any of your comments. And uh, don't get too technical because I'm about a 90. I, I would say I'm maybe, you know, I'm not about an 80% when it comes to uh, DSP work. I hold myself to a very high standard. And um, I, for most people, I'm the DSP god. But for me... I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm barely above beginner in my world, so it's a different standard that I hold myself to. So I'm, I'm not uh, a DSP god by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm just willing to try and learn, and I've learned the basics enough to keep from blowing stuff up, and get it sounding pretty good, and then uh, I'm steadily learning more every day. You know. Um, that's the other thing. You got to be willing to continuously learn because this toolbox is vast and powerful. And uh, you're, going to, you're going to learn. You're going to learn from other people that, that work with this stuff. You're going to learn from mistakes. You're going to learn from tutorials and videos. And you're going to continuously accumulate bits of knowledge that make this toolbox infinitely more uh, capable, you know. Um, so don't let it overwhelm you at the beginning. Just um, use the tool you need to, to change your spark plug. Don't try to rebuild the engine right away. Uh, use the tool you need up front and don't worry about the other stuff if, you know, until it starts to come into play. You don't have to use every tool in the toolbox. You know. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Peace, guys.